So 2018, when my husband and I first separated, once we got back together, I ended up getting pregnant. Honestly, it wasn't really the best time because we were trying to work on our marriage, rekindle our intimacy. You all remember testimony time, the woman of God, the virtuous woman that came out to talk about how God restored our marriage. If you've not seen the video, you are missing because that is what is trending now right so go and click the link in the description box we already you know discussed about a story time so go and watch it first so that you can know what's going on you can catch up <laughs> this is a reaction video of people coming to give their two cents about this whole situation a woman of virtue she came to give testimony that how God restored her marriage after infidelity, how her man left her while she was pregnant to go meet another woman. Even the mother-in-law knows. And he came back and she even had to apologize. You know, she everything is just so good now. And she's like, even coming for women that are coming for her, that she, she needs help. And she's like, you women are bitter. That is why you're not married. <laughs> Anyways, I have a reaction video. A lot of people like giving their two cents. And I decided to put the videos together for us to watch. So let's go ahead and watch the videos together. And I'll be back to share my thoughts at the end of the video. 2018, when my husband and I first separated, once we got back together, I ended up getting pregnant. Honestly, it wasn't really the best time because we were trying to work on our marriage, rekindle our intimacy. Okay, it's a lot to unpack with this story. I watch all parts. So here we go. Now listen, I'm not here to shit on nobody, marriage or experiences, okay? But if I gotta be honest, because I'm married myself as a wife. Sister, you was in a, hello Barbara, this Shirley relationship, woman to woman. In my heart, I know and I don't believe God was leading you to stay in that marriage. Mm -hmm. We got to stop this narrative of pushing religion to fit the narrative and the decisions that we make. Yeah. It was three women in that, in that story that enabled that man behavior. His mother, his wife, and the sad piece. That's exactly how it always go. Now, no marriage is perfect because mm -hmm. you got to go through some shit, but we will not be sitting up here pushing this whole, you have to suffer. You have to be disrespected. You have to sit in silence and just be that that's mm -hmm. bullshit. Like, if we really going to talk about this, that man had no business being married. From the story you told, I don't know him personally, but what I will say is this. Abandoning your pregnant wife is not what a husband would do. Mm -mm. It's not what a man would do. And the mother was just as much to blame. Because in the story, you said he was living with his mother when he abandoned you to go and be in a relationship and sleep with another woman that he was in a relationship with for nine months. Again, I'm a boy mom. And there is no way on God's green earth my son going to come and lay up underneath my goddamn roof and not take care and support his pregnant wife. Now, if he say, Mama, we done. I can't do this no mm -hmm. more. I want to move on. I, want, I have to respect that. Okay. But what I can't respect is the fact that you have abandoned your, ch your child, your seed, your seed to go and lay up underneath another woman. You be a man and you tell your wife, it's not working, but I will always be here to support you with these babies because you did not do this on your own, okay? That's how a mother push her son to be a damn man. You know, I, I don't support foolishness. Now, if he don't do it, that's on him, but I will not support bullshit like that. Let's go to the second woman, the sad piece. Baby, you see how he doing his wife. You see how he's sitting up here doing his pregnant wife, got this woman at home by herself, hasn't really communicated with her, none throughout the pregnancy. And you sitting over here thinking you're going to be different? You thinking he going to divorce his wife and get with you? And all of a sudden start a family with you? Oh, it couldn't have been her. It's, 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 it, it couldn't have been him. It's her. It's her. That's what women do. That's what we always go wrong. You always think it's the other woman. No. You have to pay attention to the red flags and the signs. So you played yourself, sad piece. You played yourself. Third, the wife. Sitting up there, praying out to God, talking about God talking to you. <laughs> sitting up there pregnant with a man, baby, and you can't even pick up the phone and call him. Talking about, I don't want to bother him. I don't want. Are you serious? This is a marriage? Going into labor and can't even pick up the phone and call your husband and say, hey, this is what's going on. Are you serious? 
three women in that story in Abel, that man behavior. And that's why he was out there behaving like that, behaving like a fucking child, yeah. calling himself a man, a son, and a goddamn husband. Mm -hmm. And then you get online and tell this story from 2018 and talk about some God, God, God ain't had nothing to do with that. That was that was free will. Yeah. He made a decision to leave. He made a decision to bring another woman into that marriage. That woman made another a decision to sleep with a married man. The mother made a decision to sit there and not hold her son accountable for what he was doing to his wife and his child. And sister, you made a choice to go back to that man after all that bullshit he had put you through. God had nothing to do with this. And this is the very same reason why people, a lot of people out here yelling out, oh, we don't want to get married. We don't want to get married because of this crazy ass narrative exactly. okay that it has to stop yeah. it has to stop we all have our shortcomings we all have we we've been through a lot of shit i will say that mm -hmm. but one thing we don't do you're not going to get disrespectful you will not abandon me and your family you abandon me and your family it's a wrap god ain't no you don't you don't a man don't move like that mm -hmm. and i get it all of this god restored my marriage and god saved this god and forgiveness and all this and that again if that's how people choose to operate more power to you more power to you and I am here to say healthy marriages do exist. And of course, you got to go through something to get to something, mm -hmm. right? But under no circumstances do a marriage supposed to be that much pain, that much suffering, and that much disrespect. What's happening is you got too many immature people out here trying to step into the big league and have no idea how to play the game. They're not on the up and up. They don't take those vows seriously. They're not walking in God's purpose. They don't care about their marriages. And that's the new norm for marriages. And that's why it's so fucking unhealthy. That's why this fucked up narrative is being pushed. That's why people out here yelling out real marriage and real, when they see it, they don't believe it. That's why so many sad pieces out here yeah. don't even know they damn worth thinking they really doing something, okay? That's why so many boys out here that call themselves men out here just procreating with whoever because women enabling that behavior. That's why so many women out here getting married have no idea what the hell they doing in their marriages. God is definitely there for your marriage. He can't see you through a whole lot of things. But at some point, we got to be honest. Sister, you was in the hello, Barbara. This is Shirley. He thought the grass was greener on the other side. And what he found out, that it wasn't. So he came running back. And guess what? You were sitting right there, praying and hoping that he came back. That's it. That's all. Monogram that I got, I sent it to my husband, and he didn't even respond. Like, that's how clocked out he was of our relationship. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. When the relationship you have with your God is primarily built of deception, manipulation, guilt, and shame, what do you expect to attract in your waking life? And I don't mean to come off very insensitive, especially not towards this creator, but when you think about it, there is a strong correlation between how religious you are and your likelihood to accept abuse and manipulation in your life. Because you accept it from your God to begin with. A lot of religious people are very in denial about how toxic the relationship they have with their God is and how that goes on to mirror every other relationship they have in their lives. If your religion is a breeding ground for low self-esteem, turning the other chick, people pleasing, you are susceptible to abuse. All you have to do is endure the pain and fast and pray before God blesses you. And over time, what will happen is that you will glorify your suffering, convincing yourself that you're one of God's strongest soldiers are simultaneously blaming the devil on demons instead of holding your abusers accountable. Why do you think a lot of priests and pastors can get away with doing the most heinous things? I mean, I don't think people realize how dangerous this can be until it's too late. Many women have been found dead in the hands of a narcissistic man because they were trying to pray the demon away. Many women are running to check, taking relationship advice and they're encouraged to stay in toxic relationships because it's a test from God. And only and only if they pray hard enough, if they fast hard enough, if they sacrifice more, God will bless them by turning the hearts of their narcissistic husbands. And I want to finish this video by saying this lady sharing this video as a testimony for other Christian women isn't an achievement. This is very damaging and extremely harmful to other victims because it's teaching them that they can put up with this. Maybe her situation was different, but so many women will lose their their lives trying to keep up with this lifestyle of I just have to be patient and pray and God will turn the heart of my husband and everything will be happy ever after hey to the lady that said God restore her marriage I just want to let you know your husband is the weapon that formed against you and prospered <laughs> girl get off my time mom, with that stupid shit leave that damn man <laughs> A lot of the comments, like I said, were very evil. A lot of very evil, bitter 
people projecting fear onto my marriage, into my union, talking bad about my husband, talking bad about something that happened six years ago in the beginning of our marriage. Nobody is God to tell me that that's not the plan that God had for my life. Nobody knows what that journey looks like. And I came on here to share because I knew that more people needed to have softened hearts. More people needed to understand that salvation is not safe for everybody else but adulterers. More people were offended at my story than I was. More people were upset for me. And again, I know that comes from a place of you're not willing to understand what forgiveness really looks like. You're not willing to love other people the way that Christ loves us. And I'm going to continue to share what God does for me and my husband. I'm going to continue to love my husband and tell the world about what God is doing for us because I am married to a man who has decided to make changes, a man who has been working to be better for me, for his children, a man who is willing and also is very open and honest about his own personal struggles. And there are a lot of men who are afraid to do just that because there are so many judgmental women who are not willing to show forgiveness. So... This is honestly my first time seeing any content from this particular creator. Um, but after seeing this video, I went to her page and noticed that she has a marital coaching platform that you can pay for. She's not doing it for free. So she did not share this story for free. Um, I believe that she shared this story um, to convince women who are hanging on by a thread with any ounce of hope that God can save their marriage to come to her for her marital coaching. Now, I don't know if she's a marital counselor. I didn't get that far on her page, but I didn't see those credentials. So do with that information what you will. Um, but it's always so funny to me, though, that women will get on this app, complain, or share a failure on the part of a man that they love and when the internet does not agree or comes for the man y'all want to get mad i don't understand what happens in your brain we only know that your husband cheated <laughs> and left you pregnant by yourself for the entire nine months and then came to the hospital but also left when the woman that he is in relationship with called him we only know that because you told us. And because people do not agree with the path that you took, all of a sudden it's y'all don't know the Lord for yourselves, you don't know the word for yourselves, and you don't understand how forgiveness works. Y'all got to stop doing that. If that's the path that you want to take, kudos to you. If that's what you want to do with your life, I think that's great. But you can't be mad at other people for not doing the same thing or for having an opinion about the path that you took because you put it on the internet and made it public, babe. I posted a video a couple of months back about how the church can be harmful to women. And this is what I mean right here. Like, I don't know if you caught what she said at the end, but it was like, there are so many men who aren't willing to be vulnerable and share their mistakes because women are unwilling to forgive. Where are the men at the Christian men at who are teaching their husbands to forgive for infidelity. Point me in that direction and we can go from there. After watching how God restored my marriage after infidelity, I have been consumed with enlightenment. And I just have a few words to share with the people today. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. But after hearing this story, I believe that the favor is transferable. And let me tell you how. See, now I know that the Lord's strongest soldier list is not for everybody. It's actually VIP only because he only gives his most traumatic, abusive, shameful, and hurtful situations to his strongest soldiers because he knows they can handle it. So for all the wives that stay the course, meaning you become depressed, stress, and a shell of yourself, you shall be rewarded on earth, within that marriage, and in heaven. So the next time he knocks your head between a washer and a dryer, two black eyes like Ricky Raccoon, don't you leave your husband. You just call on the Lord and he will deliver you from this situation. 
And after that, you need to go to your local Dick Sporting Goods or Academy Sports and get you some headgear and a mouthpiece because you're only being tested. But it has already been ordained that you are crash dummy approved. Mm -hmm. Amen. And let's talk about the infidelity. Don't worry about the side bitches or the side babies because they're only temporary. You see, a husband lasts a lifetime, but the side bitches are only seasonal. Mm -mm -mm. You know, for me personally, it's already too late. I've already fallen short of the glory and got a divorce. I couldn't pass the test. I filled that motherfucker with flying colors, which just means I'm defective, okay? So you can send my ass on back to the factory. But for you, there's still hope, okay? God will deliver you out of that fucked up ass marriage, okay? You stay the course. You keep praying, protecting yourself, and you will be rewarded with a lifetime of durability, resiliency, and y'all will live happily ever after. Amen. I'm really just trying to figure out what was the reason of telling us the story about how God restored your marriage when you were just a big dummy the entire time. Anyway, so you guys were separated. Marriage wasn't going very well. That happens. That's normal, right? That's normal. He's living with his mm -hmm. mom, living with your mom. God told you to pack a bag and put it next to the door. So you did that. And every morning you would stare at that bag. Stare at that bag. Stare at that bag. You said, I want to be obedient. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm being obedient. That man call you up to him. I want you to come stay the night with me. You're like, okay, cool. You go stay the night with him. Right? Because a lot of us would have done that. We would, A lot of us would have been like, okay. But then you ended up moving in and you ended up getting pregnant. And as soon as you got pregnant, he said, I don't want this. I don't want you. That would have been my sign to tell God, like, you know what? I don't think this is working out, right? I don't think this is working out. Anyway, so you decide, okay, I'm going to back. I'm going to do this entire pregnancy by myself. But in, right after you found out she was pregnant and you, was, you guys are separated again, you find out he's talking to his coworker. You talking to his mom. His mom said, like, well, they're having fun. <laughs> the way I would have fought his mom? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? They have, what do you mean they're having fun? <laughs> I would have started twitching right so then you go through this whole pregnancy by yourself and the day that the day you miraculously go into labor this man is outside your house in his car okay he follows your parents to the hospital y'all get there he's sitting there snoring he's sitting there sleep he ain't talking to you you're not talking to him your mother is barely talking to you but your man, your husband, ain't talking to you at all. He's there. His mistress is still texting him X, Y, Z. Because she knows what's going on. She knows She knows the dealio. She knows the rundown. She knows where he's going in the night. He leaves. Come back with some flowers. He's telling you a story. Oh, yeah. The flowers were in the car. Da, 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 da. We'll do it. We'll, you know, the hospitals also sell flowers. I digress. Um, so, you play a house with him again. <clears throat> you think it... Oh, He's back. But you're noticing that he's still texting the mistress. Her name is still popping up on the screen. You say, I'm going to turn a blind eye to it. <laughs> that is your whole husband. <laughs> so you let that man cheat on you the entire time. Oh, and then abandon you during your pregnancy. <gasps> I fear, I fear that I, he would have had an ass whooping. <laughs> the way my eye would have been twitching. Every single time that name would have popped up. Actually, the name wouldn't even popped up. The phone would have been broken. And I'm not even a violent person, but how dare you leave me for my entire pregnancy and then come play house with me laying all over my bed and then leaving as soon as that woman calls, you leave and you go, to, he goes to be with her. Now you sitting there by yourself with the kids and you think God told you that this is how your life was supposed to be. God showed you every single sign and you read them as you was like, oh, I don't see red flags. Actually. I'm blind all of a sudden. I can't read. <laughs> I can't read the signs. I can read them. I can listen to the prophetics, the prophetic messages saying three days, but you cannot read. You need a God himself to come down, sit you down and hold your hand and say what he needed to say because every single, you did, every single thing you did was against God's wants. God was literally showing you this man did not want you and he did not want your kids. Then he shows you that he did not want you he wanted to be in a with another woman. He showed you that his mother was not to be trusted. <laughs> and 
And then he shows you in that labor and delivery room that he was not the man for you because he wasn't even consoling you. He wasn't even making sure you were good during the entire pregnancy. And then in, in, in the room that you were delivering in, he was not showing you that he was actually present and wanted you to be okay. And, the, you know, he, the only way he held you was because the doctor told him to. So you waited, I don't know how many years. Um, this happened in 2018, I believe. You waited this many years to tell the story on this here app and thought that people were going to agree with you. Oh, bless God. God bless. Mm, 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 mm. What? Be so for real. Be so absolutely for real. Are you just trying to justify yourself? This was what God wanted? Because that's what it sounded like. You know, you know, like... I'm kind of I'm kind of concerned that you were using God to justify your behaviors, your lack of critical thinking skills. Your survival skills are on zero. You're teaching. Uh -huh. I hope you have a. You're teaching young girls that they should stay despite seeing all the signs that they should leave. All right. First sonogram that I got, I sent it to my husband and he didn't even respond. Like that's how clocked out he was of our relationship. And it wasn't until I want to say like a month or two, maybe three months later that I found out that he was talking to someone at his job and they were in a relationship. For the whole duration of my pregnancy, he is with that woman and we have not communicated at all. No calls, no texts. He doesn't know anything about the baby. I don't know what's going on outside of like when I have conversations with his mom and his- I quite literally never in my life want to be loved like that. That is absolutely insane. Imagine having a young child getting pregnant again and your husband leaves you and your child and the one inside of you and says nothing to you for your entire pregnancy and you get on this app saying this was god's work and he had a whole girlfriend he was effing at his job and then you get on the internet mad when people are saying you're insane to get on the internet and be like, that's how God restored our marriage. The way people use God to be like, God did this amazing thing. Maybe, maybe God was trying to break up your marriage. Maybe God was telling you, you shouldn't be with this person. And that's why he was allowing all of these bad things to happen. Mm -hmm. Why does nobody ever place those two together? Why is it when it's something bad, it's the devil. Oh. But when it's something good, it's God. Maybe God was saying, you need to get out of that. This man is not for you. That was never a thought option. And another story was six years old. But I quite literally absolutely never want to be loved. I no, I just I watched that whole thing. And like the fact that she's so serious is my like the delusion. This is why like these people give cult. <laughs> it gives cult. I had another thing. These are the same type of women because in her response video, she called women bitter. You're just bitter you're not married. If I have to go through that, baby, I don't ever want it. And I am married. And I would do things that were illegal if my husband ever played in my face like that. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, y'all got to watch out. False prophets. Y'all got to watch out about the way you are receiving messages from people. Have y'all seen that video where the lady was like, God restored her marriage after her and her husband had separated for about nine, ten months while she was pregnant? And he decided to go be with somebody else. I hear stories like that all the time as a divorce attorney. All the time. And the one that kind of stuck out the most to me was a couple years ago. I was helping this lady, this young lady. She had to be like 19, 20, early 20s. And she was trying to get an injunction and also establish paternity against her ex. And I'm asking her and I'm like, yeah, you know, what type of time sharing do you want? What's the schedule that you would like to request? Blah, blah, blah. And she starts listing a whole bunch of effed up things that this man has done to her. Oh, my God. I cannot say everything. But the one thing that stuck out to me, and I don't even know if it's true. But she said that one night he went out to the club and I guess he went out with one of his little side chicks and he ended up, you know, mm -mm -mm, doing everything with his mouth on that young lady and came home and kissed her and the baby after he had did all of that. 
on that young lady. I don't know how she found this out. Maybe the girl reached out to her. I wasn't trying to ask all of that, you know, but I have so many stories like this. Why do we, why does women have to suffer? Why is it that the reward for us suffering, or I don't even know how to put it, but women just have to suffer to prove that you're a virtuous woman, to prove that you're a good woman. If somebody calls a woman, oh, sh my wife, she's, she gives me peace of mind. She gives me peace. She's very calm. She doesn't, you know, it's because you're tolerating a lot of things that you're not supposed to tolerate. You are suffering in silence. <laughs> that is what I, I just feel like that is what a call. That is what women are these days. I don't know. I'm supposed to be, but anyways, why is that women have to suffer for you to be sure that yes, you are happily married? And the fact that she feels like this is normal, like this is a testimony for older women to learn from it is like you're telling people I tolerated a lot of BS you also can tolerate a lot of BS you also can accept BS from your husband and you can say it's God that spoke to you <laughs> somebody in the comment section in the first video was saying that I am actually making fun of her or I'm um, kind of, you know, there's a way this person puts it, I saw the comments, <laughs> this was like, shame on you, Maria, for posting this video because you're kind of shaming her for likes and view. The person, I'm not shaming her because she posted this video on her page because she's proud of herself. She's proud of the achievements she has made. So she wanted to tell the world that this is an achievement for her for doing something like this after six years. This happened 2018. She's proud of it. So it's not like I'm going, to, maybe she's my friend and I came to talk about her story. No, she posted it. So she's not ashamed of this. She wants the world to see. She wants everybody to hear it. And that is why it's everywhere. And that's why everybody's talking about it. And this is sometimes make it look like that is how marriage is supposed to be. We women, we, the, when it comes to Christianity, religion, God, it is always doesn't, I, I would just say it doesn't always favor women because the always, society always look at women for you to accept so much, so much wrong from your partner that they will not even advise the man to accept. I'm trying to think if it was the other way, if, if this happens and it was the woman that this happened so probably some the guy needed her probably when he was well, probably he used to have money and he didn't have money anymore he couldn't provide anymore or he was very sick or very ill and she just left and went to meet her family and she started you know having relations with um a colleague at work and he's aware for like a year before he could get back on his feet he's not going to accept her back even if you accept her that is rare anyway, but even if he's going to do it just for punishment and he's not going to come back six years later to come and start giving testimony time, church people testimony time, uh, how God restored my marriage after my wife left me when I was poor. <laughs> Why is it always women? See, I just feel like you are seeing red flags. You are seeing how someone doesn't care about you. I feel like for someone to go outside to cheat on you to your face, the family is away. Like that's even the most annoying part. The mom is away. Definitely the old family is away. And they're telling you is having a good time while you are pregnant. In fact, I'm very sure your pregnancy just started. So but I, anyway, you went ahead with the pregnancy and <laughs> Why is it that women are always glorified for suffering? Why do why are we always glorified for suffering? If a woman has not suffered, if a woman has not come out to say, I was suffered, I, I endured so much. They see it as 
is not normal. You're supposed to suffer to enjoy a good thing, and which is all wrong. I, for me, I feel like the man doesn't even care about her. I feel like he came back to her because he has seen that him being with that side piece is not going to be favorable to him. It's not because he finally decided, okay, I know. Mm, and there's possibility whereby he might be doing it again that she's not aware yet probably is hiding his tracks and she doesn't know or he's going to do it later even worse so i feel like he doesn't care about her because if he cares about cares about her or cares about her health or anything he's not going to in fact he's going to break the marriage first or go separate and say okay i can no longer be with you anymore i want to go be with this other person the fact that he left the house while you were pregnant i feel like that's the first child which you don't even know anything about pregnancy at that point. The father he left you to go meet his mom, and his mom is away. Like the mother is away. And now you're saying, see, this whole thing is normal. It happens in almost all marriages. Infidelity, cheating from the man's side, which is, but the father she's making it look as if is God. God spoke to her if this is about god this is what if just as someone said what if god is showing you the signs for you to get out for you to save yourself and leave this thing but you're trying to convince yourself and seeing the good in where there is no good what if god is telling you that this is not the right place i want you to be what if you're reading the old signs wrong you know when <laughs> Some people go out and pray and be like, God, show me sign to show that this guy is my husband. Just show me sign. If he's not my husband, just show me sign. You know, those kind of prayer that these people pray. And then when God showed them the sign, like you clearly see the sign, they ignore the signs, they ignore the red flag. And that is what is happening. That is what happens. So I just feel like that's what happens to her. She kind of ignore and try to feel like she can see the good in what is going on after that it's just so painful and i feel like for her bringing it out if it confidently is because she feels like this is a normal thing it is not normal so if you forgive forgive your husband for infidelity it's fine but don't make it look like it's normal and god spoke to you And this old God speaking and Christianity, if it was the other way around, if it was the man, immediately, immediately, the man is going to accept her back. Like, it's, 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 that's the end. And I said it, even though he accepts her back, it's for payback. Like, he really wants to show her Pepe or show his her family Pepe. Like, he really wants to disgrace her for accepting her back. But... It's we women, we try to, you know, make it look like. <sighs> Anyways, I still have other reactions to share with you all. People are still talking about this matter and I'm going to post part two or part, let me call it part three of this video where other people are sharing their reaction because I cannot put all your reaction in this video. This video is going to be so long. <laughs> Anyways, watch out for the part three of other people's reaction. But then I would like to know your thoughts about this video than comment section. What do you have to say to her? What is your take generally on people always try to tag God in everything and make it look like, oh God, this is what God did to me, like a testimony. Oh, my Christian sisters, you also can 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 take a lot of BS from men and God will speak to you like ah oh, God, 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 God. I just feel like I have so much to say, but I I I'm not, I don't even know how to put them in words, but I just feel like this is all wrong and it is not normal. It is not normal at all. Let me know your thoughts about this video down in the comment section. I thank you all so much for tuning in in today's video. It's your favorite girl again, Maria Davis. And don't forget to like and share and subscribe and turn on the post notification bell to get notified as soon as I upload another interesting video. And of course, I'll see you all in my next video. Juicy.